So in the last video we have seen the implementation of timers so this time uh, we are going to expand it and let's make something useful out of this timer okay so we are trying to design a, a let's say a simple piano okay so that's what we are trying to do uh, this piano it's very simple actually so it has only let's say one two three only four keys and of course there is a speaker and whenever you press each key a different sound should come so basically what happens is whenever you press a key uh, the speaker will generate a different frequency okay so let's define those frequencies let's say we are aiming at 4 kilohertz 8 kilohertz 16 kilohertz and 32 kilohertz okay later if you want you can expand this uh, no issues so as of now this is what we need okay now let's explore how it will look inside so of course these four keys they will be connected to our circuit this is again the abstract view so let's call it k1 k2 k3 and k4 and whenever you press a key it will generate the corresponding frequency that will be a square wave because we have a digital circuit um, but before driving it into speaker we need to amplify it and convert it into analog form so we of course will have an analog to digital converter after that we usually have an amplifier and after that we will have our speaker so in our course we are not worried about these guys because they are unlocked. We will look at this part, whichever generates these different frequencies. So different square wave. So yesterday we have seen uh, we will need a reference clock for generating any square wave. Okay, so we have a crystal oscillator. Again, let's say running at 100 megahertz. That's our reference clock. So you know this is just an extension of what we did yesterday right so what we can have we can have four timers one two three four t1 t2 t3 t4 all of them works at the same clock frequency so we have a clock 100 megahertz so all of them will be sharing it and this will be generating our corresponding frequency again 4k 8k 16k and 32k the thing is we have a single output line okay so depending upon which key is pressed we have to select which of these uh, frequencies should go as the output if none of the keys are pressed uh, we will just drive the output as zero so you can see like this is again some kind of uh, multiplexing so we can have a kind of multiplexer and we can connect these guys as the input to the multiplexer and I will also connect ground to the multiplexer because if none of them are pressed I just want to drive a low voltage so what will go as the select line the select lines will be of course uh, k1 k2 k3 k4 okay now this mux is slightly different from the muxes that we discussed before. In the traditional mux, if you have four control lines, uh, you can have up to two, two out of four, 16 inputs. Because if we have four control lines, we'll say like zero, 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 we'll select the first one, zero, 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 one, the second one, zero, zero, one, zero, third, zero, zero, one, one, fourth, so on and so forth. That's not what we need here. Okay, look at this condition. That means if I want to select a particular frequency, I will have to press two keys at the same time. That's not what we need. So basically, I will say like if I press only K1, oh, so we have K1, K2, K3, K4. So if I press only K1, that is 1, 0, 0, 0. I will choose this as the output. Only K2, 0, 0, 1, 0. This one. Then 0, 1, 0, 0, K3, 1, 0, 0, 0, fourth one, and 0, 0, 0, 0, if nothing is pressed, uh, this one. So this is how the control lines will look like. Okay, so again, you can see this will be a kind of priority encoder. Multiplexes are also kind of priority encoder. Okay, so here you will see at any point in time, 
only one of the select lines uh, high. Okay, so this kind of coding, this is again kind of coding. This is our general uh, normal binary numbers. This kind of encoding, we can call them as one hot encoding. So different kind of coding you have seen. We have binary codes, then we have gray code, binary code a decimal different style. So one hot is also one kind of coding. So you have a binary number and only one bit will be high everything else will be zero. So that kind of coding we call as a one-hot encoding. So we are going to use one-hot encoding to select which timer output should be driven as the final output. Okay, so that's it. So we can start designing. So we'll be doing hierarchical design. Uh, that means we will first design these timers separately. Then we redesign this uh, MUX or priority encoder separately. Then we will instantiate all of them together to build our final piano okay so the code for timer last time we have right so we can actually reuse it this was called led blinker okay so let me take that entire code and put it in a new file and simply call it timer this time so timer so one input is clock of course there is a reset and we have this bunch of flip-flop and this logic now what I want to do is uh, like software I want to do some code reuse okay so I don't want to write four timers separately because the basic logic is exactly same in all four timers what will be different the difference will be coming at uh, this value the value at which we should flip the output uh, that is what is going to change because of that the width of this register that will be different for for different time right otherwise everything else remains same so instead of hard coding this uh, maximum value if i can some way configure it or we call it as parameterize i can use the same timer code for generating those four different frequencies okay so that's what we are going to look so first thing let me say in this original code itself uh, if you have constants like this uh, like software we don't prefer it to hard code inside the code because later if you want to change this number here you can see it is used at two places and if you forget to change it one place and if you just change it at another place your logic will be wrong so in software you know at the top uh, this constant like in C, you will define like hash define uh, something, right? So we have similar feature in Vidlog also. There are many ways of declaring a constant. So one way is something called local param. So you can simply write local param. You can see it's a keyword. Uh, I can say like max timer value equal to this value. And wherever you want this value, you can just write max timer value. So you can see, of course, what is going to happen. Wherever there is max timer value will be replaced by this value. Again, what uh, physically happens? Okay, so when the tool runs, simulation tool, he will replace all this with this one. And implementation tool also, uh, before he builds the actual circuit, wherever he sees this max timer value, he will replace it with this corresponding value. So timer.v, you can just compile and see v log timer.v. Okay, so local param. It stands for local parameter. Local parameter used for declaring constants inside a module. That is where we use it. Another one is using define. So like in C, we have the same thing here also. Instead of hash define, here it is tick define. Okay, you have to use the tick which is on the tilde key on your keyboard. So the syntax is tick define. Again, you can give whatever value you need. Uh, let's call again max time value this time, let's say, and followed by that value. Something like this. Or you can write 2060 this itself. Same syntax as C. Instead of hash, 
because in Verilog hash is used for some other purpose. We'll see it. So instead of hash, it is tick. Tick define name of the constant and value of the constant. And wherever you want this value, you write this name. The only difference from C is again, you cannot just replace it with value. You need to write tick max value. Okay. So you need to replace it with tick max value. Let me comment this out. So that is the syntax. Fine. So if you don't put this tick, he will give an error saying like this is not declared. This is not defined. So we need to put this tick defined. So again, uh, this is used to used to declare constants inside a module. That is where it is used. Now there is one more way to do it. That is what we are going to look today using so-called parameters. So in the module declaration, we have already seen how input output ports are declared, right? In addition to input output port, there is a way to declare constants also. So those constants we call as parameter. This is called local param inside a module. But if you declare it with the input output declaration, we call it as parameter declaration. So this is how we do uh, module timer followed by hash and in bracket you need to say parameter. You can see that's also a keyword max time value followed by the value. Okay. Then you should close that bracket then open a new bracket then you declare your input output. Okay. So this is your parameter declaration. So you can declare any number of parameters like this. Okay. So if you have some min value, you need to write that parameter only once. You can say like min value equal to zero, so on and so forth. Okay. So that's also permissible. Now this you can use here. Yeah. If you compile there are no errors. Now we will prefer this style because uh, in hierarchical design, when you instantiate this module within another module, same way you do port mapping, you can do something called parameter mapping also. So from a module higher in the hierarchy, you can change this parameter value. Okay. So if you are implementing only timer, max value will be this one. When you simulate this, max value will be this one. But when you instantiate this timer inside some other module, say our piano, from piano, I can change this value. That's a good feature. Okay. So uh, if I am instantiating four timers inside piano, I can pass four different max time values and I can get four different kind of timers. That's the major advantage. So one issue we have solved. Next issue is uh, this register width. This width again, yesterday we calculated 26 uh, to store this number, right? Now, if you look at your code, uh, if your register width is anything more than this, still the logic will work, no issue. But if it is less than this one, uh, you will never reach this value. So our logic will not work. So if you want four different frequencies, okay, what we can do is we can take the worst case max timer value and we can declare the register with that size. That is one way. Or you can make a very wide register. No issues. Uh, that's also possible. For example, here, which one will need the largest register? The one with longest period will need the largest register. So the longest period is the shortest frequency. So 4 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz. So what is the period? 1 by 4,000, which is 250 microsecond. So period is 250 microsecond uh, rough reference clock is rough clock we have seen 10 nanosecond so how many clocks we will have to count uh, 250 micro divided by 10 nano so it will be 
25 10 to the power of 3. It is only 25,000. This is much uh, smaller than what we have here. So this register can definitely count up to 25,000. No issues. But yesterday we def de designed it for half second. Maybe in future if you want like one second or two second, still I should be able to use the same timer. So what we can usually do is we can make a large white register uh, so that we can count up to a large value. How wide it should be again depends upon our application. Uh, generally like uh, software we can make a register of 31 bits wide so you can simply 32 bits wide sorry you can simply declare reg 31 down to zero timer value or you can declare integer timer value okay so in well log when you declare integer that automatically means it is 32 bits wide so timer since it is inside always block on the left side the tool will automatically make it as a register type and it will be 32 bits wide now. So you've seen 32 bit, you can count up to 2 to hour of 32 minus 1, which is like 4G, which is a huge. So you can generate very, very low frequencies also. So now you can see uh, there are no constants in your code other than the zero, and the zeros uh, should remain as zero, so no issues. Uh, this parameter we are passing through this way, and the register width we have declared it like this. So if you compile it now, there are no errors. Okay, so same timer. Now I will say I have parameterized it because of this parameter declaration. Now I will go ahead and design that piano. So I will take a new source with lock and let's call it module piano. This is the internal circuit of piano. Okay, so of course we'll have input clock coming. And let's say we have a reset. And we have the four keys. K1 input, K2 input, K3 input, K4. And we have one output, output. Let's say a speaker. Finally, it should be connected to a speaker. Okay. And module. Now let's instantiate the timer. We need four timers. Okay. So we take this one and we are going to directly instantiate it here. Okay. So timer and syntax you remember you will need module name then instance name. Now if you have parameters the syntax is module name then hash followed by parameter mapping same syntax so dot max value and within bracket you should say what should be the max value we will find it out and this is my timer word so let's call it t1 and then we can connect this clock reset and output okay so output is called led here uh, maybe we can change it to freak out frequency output and change this to freak out or LED we are replacing it with freak out okay looks good let's take freak out and put that here so dot clock dot reset dot freak out so this Okay, this clock is same as this clock, 100 megahertz. This reset is this reset from timer one. I'm expecting four kilohertz. So let's say four freak four uh, kilohertz. Okay, freak four k. Okay. Fine. What should be the value here? We will calculate. Okay, so like that, we will put four timers, but each instance should have unique name remember otherwise it's a syntax error t1 t2 t3 t4 now what should be the max value we already calculated for 4 kilohertz it was 25000 so you can put 25000 for 8 kilohertz it is double the frequency that means half the pd so the maximum timer value will be also half so 12500 and next one six two five zero 
and next one 3124 okay so i'm simply declaring them as decimal numbers that is perfectly fine so even here you don't have to say like tick t and all because it's a constant so this is good enough so this is our piano dot v now what is missing we need that multiplexer which chooses which frequency should go out right so that logic you can write it as a separate module or you can write it here itself so i am making it as a combination circuit always at star begin end okay let's write if k1 if k1 is pressed so here also there is a priority first key and second key both are pressed together only the first key output will go so speaker will be freak 4 kilohertz Freak 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay, so what should be their type? Whether they should be a rest type? No, they are not used on the left hand side, so there is no confusion. But speaker is used on the left hand side, so this should be output rest speaker. Now, these guys they are connected to the output of this module. Okay, so they should be declared as wire type. So we have wire freak 4k freak. 8k, freak, 16k, 12k, and 16k. Well, that means here my calculations are wrong. Okay, I halved it because assuming frequencies are doubling. So this is 4, 8. So let's make 4, 8, 16, and 32. Sorry, I'm cooking up. But I don't have to do the calculations again. So let's make it 16 and 32. If it is 12, yeah, you can just go ahead and do the recalculation. So the rule is okay, signals connected to the output port of an instantiated module should be always wire type okay so this is an output of a module and whatever you connect here this actual port should be always wire type these two are inputs to this module so these signals can be wire type or rest type that depends upon the implementation but Whatever you connect to the output of part of a module should be always wired. Okay, so we need to follow that rule. 1632. Okay, so everything looks good. Let's try compiling. T4 already declared. Okay, T1, T2 should be T3, T4. Unique module names. Okay, all looks good. We can simulate. Oh, again, there is an error. Freak out not found. Third connection in the instance T1. Okay, so he is basically saying in timer 1, he cannot find freak out. Because unlike our C compiler, when you compile this top module, not all the sub-modules automatically get recompiled. Okay, so remember, uh, my timer output was called LED. After that, I changed freak out here. And I didn't recompile the timer. Okay, I simply recompiled piano. So piano compiled properly. When he tried to do the simulation, okay, he will have to load the compiled version of timer. And when he loaded it, he cannot find freak out there. He can find only LED. So when you are compiling a top module, you should compile all the sub modules also. Okay, so if you change any modification in the submodule, you will have to recompile the module where you changed it and all the modules where you have 
instantiated that modules also provided the input output part of that instantiated module has changed if you have changed only the internal logic of some instantiated module you can simply recompile that module only you don't have to compile the top module so we have to recompile timer again and piano is already compiled so this time let's try and everything looks fine can clock we have 10 nanosecond first apply reset and let's keep all keys low and let's run like for a few clocks and let's see how things look like okay let's run for some time yeah speaker output is low now let's remove the reset for zero and run forever run for a long time uh, you can see the outputs coming from different timers so 4, 8 is almost double of that, 16 and 32 I can see same frequency. That means in the code I have messed up. So you can see uh, when I copy pasted somehow same values came here. So this should be 6250. Okay. So I changed the code so we have to recompile. So stop simulation. We log piano V and restart and again clock all these we have to force again and let's run for some time let's remove reset force zero and run all Yeah, now it looks fine. Highest frequency, half of it, half of it, half of it. So all frequencies are coming, but output is low because none of the keys are pressed. So let me press the second key, I'm making it one. And let's see. And now you can see the output started to come because this key is high. And what is the output? K2 corresponds to 8 kilohertz. So you can see like 8 kilohertz is coming. Same way if I make that low. And if I make K4 high. Okay. Remember simulation is still running. Okay. We have stopped the simulation. So here I made it low, so everything became low. Here I press the other key, and as soon as I press the other key, my speaker became 32. Okay, so piano is working. If you have a physical speaker and if we implement the circuit on the FPGA, now we have some kind of piano. Okay, so everything looks fine. The only drawback of this design is from the perspective of power consumption. So you can see all my timers are always running, right? All my timers are always running. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I am really using them or not. So the problem is our circuits, they usually consume power whenever they run. In the case of a timer, whenever it is running, whenever it is uh, counting, that is when uh, circuit is consuming power and we want to always minimize power consumption and so in this case what we can do we can stop all the timers if the corresponding key is not pressed if i am pressing only k1 only timer one has to run all other timers can be stopped right so how can we do it one easy way is okay look at our code see each timer has a reset so if reset is high you remember our code if reset is high, everything is stuck here. 
nothing runs so that we can exploit so my requirement what is my requirement if k1 is pressed timer one should run if k1 is not pressed timer one should go into reset so k1 is pressed means k1 is high one if k1 is one it should run if k1 is zero it should not run so what should i connect here i need to connect not of k1 here not of k2 here not of k3 here and not of k4 here if i do that okay those timers will not run now do i really need this external reset no because in this module i'm not using this reset this reset was used only to reset this timer so i can simply remove it and we can just recompile our piano and restart and okay force freeze everything again and run for some time this time we can continuously run yeah there is no reset so we can just keep running and let's see what is happening you can see all timer outputs are zero because none of the keys are pressed now let me press k2 i'm pressing it yeah i pressed it you can see 8k frequency started to come and that frequency is going to the speaker also right so two things happened with that we chose the mux and we enabled the timer also. okay so this is uh, one thing we need to develop when we design uh, circuit design intelligently uh, how can we manipulate them with the available signals so that our power consumption is also okay so i guess with this timers are uh, clear to you uh, you can build other circuits also using timers a lot of them so in the next tutorial we will discuss about counters thank you